Uh, one of the other things that's different for us is the... Oh, uh -oh. See, did it again? Hi guys, it's John from Belly Russian. I'm just out here doing some servicing on my car today and it just made me think about uh, some of the comments I've had, you know, coming through from you guys, you know, asking me, oh, what's the difference between, you know, living in Australia and living in Russia and, and you know, driving here and things like that. And so it just prompted me to share some of the stuff that we do differently here in Russia uh, compared to, you know, back in Australia. Obviously with the temperature differences that we have, it makes a difference to the, some of the stuff you do in your car. Um, so one of the things obviously on the car is you have to make sure your engine can handle the cold i'm sure you know some of some of the viewers who are from you know north america or canada or alaska or you know scandinavia those sorts of countries which, which are familiar with you know the cold temperatures that we get here in russia would this would be you know very familiar for you but for someone you know from australia i grew up in the, the top end of australia which is a very warm tropical climate and then even when we lived in the south of australia it never got cold enough that it really affected you know anything on the car occasionally you'd um have some ice on your windscreen but that was about it so um yeah some of the things that we have to do and we have to sort of learn about and be conscious of and we're sort of learning every time as, as we go through a winter uh the different things that we need to do so i mean some of the, some of the things are you know obviously running a good quality oil that can handle those cold temperatures uh an oil that that uh you know doesn't doesn't freeze or get real thick on you uh that's one thing that we we do the other thing is um, the with the uh, windscreen wiper, you know, in Australia, soapy water, a lot of times there's a bug remover in there. Uh, that'll get you by all year round, but not here. Uh, as soon as you start to get these colder temperatures, the water will freeze up and, and it'll break something. So you have to run a, 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 a windscreen wiper cleaner that, that can handle these cold temperatures. As far as the radiator goes, it's quite similar, obviously, uh, went in Australia uh we have to deal with the heat and you know there are many things you have to do uh because of the heat to keep your car running well and so it doesn't overheat and here the opposite as far as you know making sure that your coolants can handle the cold temperatures and, and won't freeze or go or go you know thick and coagulate on you so making sure you go good quality coolant and they're the main things under the hood that we take care of a lot of um we don't have a uh, a garage or a workshop uh to store our car in so uh, Hopefully, when we build, we'll build a we'll build a shop or a shed for the car to, st to be staying uh, during the winter. Uh, the so what a lot of people do here, and, and you know, in a lot of colder countries, they'll have a block heater on the engine, and and that way you can have your car plugged in, and it keeps your motor warm. And then when you want to uh, drive, you've already got a warm motor. The other thing that we have installed on the car is a a remote start feature, so that we can uh, start the engine from inside the house. And, and you know when it's cold we'll start the we'll start the engine and run it for a good 10 or 15 minutes to get the engine all warmed up and then obviously the the heaters on in the car so the cars are warm by the time you want to drive whereas you know in Australia you can basically jump in and drive whenever you want to because it's it never gets that cold that would harm your engine uh, for starting it cold So another thing that uh, that we have here in Russia that we didn't have back in Australia is is obviously with our tires. Uh, in Australia, we can run one set of tires the whole year round. There is, you know, there's no weather that would make it, you know, cold enough that we would have to have, you know, a set of winter and summer tires. But obviously here in Russia, we have to have uh, a set of winter tires, and we store them uh, in the little shed that's out the front and. Anybody who drives here will generally have a second set of winter tires they put in their car, and then those tires will be studded. So while I'm filming all this, we're getting all this rain showers coming through, big, some big rain showers coming through. There's a few blue skies up ahead, so I might get it finished. But you can see, you know, there was no, there was no puddle on the ground out the front here half an hour ago, and this just came down hard. Reminds me when I was growing up in the top end of Australia. But as I was talking about before with the tires, obviously we have to have um, winter tires here, which is something that we don't, we've never had to have in Australia. And you can see 
you can see on the tires here how they're studded it all started for winter you, you can buy winter tires that aren't studded but here uh, because of the amount of snow and ice they get the studded tires are actually recommended so people will have this we've got my car and my son-in-law's car and we'll all have a, uh, a set of winter tires that we can run on our car throughout winter and you know pretty much I mean most people a lot of people who live in northern America or Canada or Alaska or even some parts of Europe and uh, Scandinavia they'd be very familiar with this but for somebody from Australia we only ever ran one set of tires and that was for did you all year round because it never got cold enough that you needed uh, to have a second set of tires and you're not allowed to run these tires during summer you have to change over there's a certain date where you change from your winter tires to your summer tires and then from your summer tires back to winter as you get going into the winter season well it's still running it's lighting up a little bit i'm gonna have to make a dash for it hopefully it won't get too wet One of the other things that's different for us is the oh, uh -oh. see did it again already the uh, the steering wheel is on the other side of the car in Australia so whereas we drive on the left hand side of the road a lot of America and Europe and a lot of the other countries drive on the right hand side of the road so getting into the wrong side of the car happens mm, not regularly but often enough so in Australia, this is where I would normally be sitting to drive a car. It's uh, This is very comfortable and very normal for me, but obviously I'm missing something, you know, pretty important for driving the vehicle. But yeah, we drive on the left-hand side of the road in Australia, and we sit in, you know, this side of the vehicle, whereas when you drive on the right-hand side, the steering wheel's on the other side of the car. So that's one of the bigger differences. It takes a little bit of getting used to. You sort of particularly you know for you know I've been driving for 30 years it's uh, you develop habits and it just becomes you just got to remember to to you know think a little bit differently so sitting on this side of the car with the steering wheel in front of me for driving on the on the right hand side of the road uh, like we do here in Russia one of the interesting things is uh, you know as far as left hand drive vehicles go which is kind of just like Australia England I think I think it's predominantly from the English uh, influence in Australia obviously Australia is a uh, an English colony uh, and you've got England Australia I think Japan and some of the other smaller island countries Fiji and a few other countries which actually drive on the left-hand side of the road so uh, but you know the, the I think over two-thirds drives on the right-hand side of the road so here in Russia predominantly they drive on the right-hand side. Well, they always drive on the right-hand side of the road, but you can buy cars with a steering wheel, either left-hand drive or right-hand drive. And you know, for, I know particularly for me, if I was you know driving here in Russia and I got a, uh, a right-hand drive vehicle, uh, it would be very uh, you know tricky because you're sitting on the outside of the lane, and that's really one of the one of the things that I always use when I'm driving here in Russia or in other countries that I've visited where they drive on the right side of the road is just to remember that as the driver I need to be in the middle of the road as far as towards not on the outside of the road but on the middle of the road near the dividing lane and you know it works really mostly all the time the only time that you sort of come unstuck and it's sort of a and you can sort of maybe make a little mistake is maybe when you're driving into a car park where the roads aren't marked or a, or an unlaned road and you'll turn the corner and you'll go oh, oh and then quickly move over but it, does, it happens very rarely these days and but there yeah, there's some of the things that you notice when you're driving when you're changing from you know driving on the left hand side of the road to driving on the right hand side of the road One of the other things that gets you uh, particularly, you know, 
is that not only is the steering wheel on the other side of the car for you know someone from Australia or England or wherever, but also the indicator and wiper stems are on different sides of the steering wheel. So for me, it's always been on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. So I'll go to put the indicator on and the windscreen wiper, you know, the windscreen wipers will come on. And that happens, you know, regularly as far as you go to turn the corner and I'll put the windscreen wipers on. Oh, oh, quickly have to change it. But yeah, that's one of those things, you know, you drive predominantly by habit and these things and you, uh, yeah, sometimes those little accidents happen, but it's easy to fix and quickly to fix. Another thing that's uh, very uncommon uh, to find in Australia is actually a column shift for your automatics. In, in Australia, all your automatics will be the T-bar down here. And obviously more modern cars have, you know, all sorts of different ways for changing gears. But but uh, when I was a young fellow, I think it was the second car I ever owned. It was a uh, Holden Tirana, it was called. And it was a great little car. I loved that little car. But uh, it had a it had a three speed, or what we used to call a three on the tree, and uh, but that was you know very few Australian cars after that ever had a, a column shift uh, gear stick. But uh, I actually quite like them. I think they're a great idea, and it works really well on this car. One of the other things from a maintenance perspective that we hadn't sort of experienced in Australia is that in winter time, when you're working on your car, uh, particularly when it's been outside, if you don't have a heated garage or a shed or something like that, uh, is in your plastics, how brittle your plastics become. Now, obviously here in Siberia, it gets down to minus 20, minus 30, uh, not all the time, but it does def definitely get down to those temperatures and can go actually you know, lower, it can go to minus 40. Uh, and uh, but when you want to do something on your car, you know, on your bumper or something like that, you know, even a lot of the little the little uh, plastic clips that hold it all in, trying to work on those in the winter time is really hard because you know they just end up, they get it so brittle and cracked. And even even just you know the general the plastics on your car in that cold temperature, if they get a good hard knock, you know, you'll crack them uh, because they're just so cold in that temperature. Yeah, just something that we didn't experience in Australia. In Australia, never got. It never got anywhere near cold enough that that would ever be an issue. You'd have to think of being too cold to work on your car. As far as driving here in Russia, uh, one of the big things obviously in winter is obviously the cold and the ice and the snow, which which we didn't deal with in Australia. And you know you can get you can get the ice, the black ice on the roads and make things slippery. But the obviously the the, the studded tires are helpful for that. Um, thankfully here around here um, they don't use salt on the roads. They use a like a, a, a gravelly sandy mix and they put that on the road to, to keep the ro roads from becoming slippery and you know from a from a car maintenance and, and you don't get that corrosion that the that the salt brings and you know i know they talk about in the states they talk about their rust belt where where you know cars just rust so quickly thankfully we don't have that here because they use a dip, they don't use salt they actually use that sand and gravel mix so that's a nice thing but it's still it's what you find in winter time is it will uh, you get that ice and snow caking up with some of that with the sand on it and it builds up on the side of your car and you sometimes you just gotta uh, knock it off. And that's actually another thing that uh, that you know just that I didn't realize living back in Australia compared to here is you know how do you wash your car or how do you even wash your windscreen you know when it gets dirty and it's minus you know minus 15 minus 20 minus 25 or whatever it is and because you can't use water, uh, you know, in, in Australia, we can wash our car with water any time of the year. Uh, but you know, these are things you learn. And the uh, the car wash places they have heated water in theirs. And the outside ones you can't really use much unless you know, unless you get a day where it's where the temperature has got up and it's you know back to to sort of zero. Uh, and then uh, or that, or you just have to take your car into a heated spot. If you've got a heated shop or a heated garage, then you can wash your car no problem. But you know, for us, that's you know, when in in the winter time, and sometimes you know, with the with the dirt and they put on the road to stop the roads being so slippery, uh, they, you know, your car will get dirty because your car in front will be flicking dirt up in your car, and then oh, how can I wash my windscreen? And but you just gotta, you can't use water. You have to use something else. 
and you can use your windscreen wiper fluid which you've changed and you know that'll get it off but if you want to try and give your car a bit more of a clean yeah you've got to have a heated spot to be able to do it which we never had in Australia. We never had that, you know, that situation in Australia because it was never cold enough that you couldn't wash your car. One of the other issues uh, that we never had in Australia is with your door locks and you know, them icing up in the winter time. Uh, you know, in Australia, nothing ever gets cold enough where it would affect your your door locks not being able to open up. But you know, with a good with a good with a good uh, maintenance program. Uh, it's not much of an issue. You just got to make sure you're using quality lubricants that that don't gum up when it gets cold. And you know, it's it's, it's very rare that they uh, would actually lock up like that when you're using a good quality lubricant in them. You know, when you've got things with the water, it gets in there, then they can be a little bit more troublesome. So another thing that that's uh, important in in in, in Russia, and, and it's, it's the same in in all countries, but just a little bit different because of the cold for us is the, you know, having some good uh, spares and tools in your car so that if you do get stuck, you've got, you know, you can you can get yourself going again. The one thing that's very important for us, and obviously being summertime, we don't have much in here right now, but we'll make sure we've got some, some jackets in the car and uh, some good warm jackets. So if your car does for some reason break down or you're in an accident or something like that, also the cold's very tough on the electric. So having a good set of uh, jumper leads and we have a, uh, a good quality uh, jump starting machine to get your car started or you know to help other people who's who are having trouble with their car and that's just being smart same we you know when we traveled in Australia uh, we always had tools in the car so if we ever broke down we could try and get ourselves going again it's not nice to be stuck on the side of the road whether it's hot or cold well guys that's pretty much the end of it for now there's probably some other things that I haven't thought of that you know we do differently uh, between you know Australia and Russia and the and the cold climates and for those of you who uh, who live in cold climates and and who are familiar with this sort of stuff, you've probably thought of a whole lot of other things that uh, that we could do. So let us know in the comments any if you've got some ideas that we should think about for you know running our cars in the cold weather, things that we probably haven't thought of yet. Uh, but we hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you give us a big thumbs up and uh, helps the channel out. Uh, if you like it, subscribe to our channel. Uh, click the notification bell. So I'm just going to finish off uh, serving the last parts of the car while I've got no rain. I've got a nice little break in the rain and we'll see you on the next one.